G'day YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So it's been a couple of weeks since I was last recording. Um, you know, I pre-recorded an episode just before I moved out of my previous home um, in the, just, it, you know, just in case I wasn't able to record a new episode, uh, basically a, two days after I physically moved and the removalist came and all the rest of it. And I'm really glad I did because frankly, it's been a nightmare. Um, it's been a nightmare for a few different reasons. First of all, I'm still in the process of unpacking. Um, I just happened to move at uh, the moment or the, you know, the period of time where I'm probably, I've probably been the busiest at work that I have ever been. And I'm usually a pretty busy person for, for work. So it's been an absolute nightmare with work. Uh, I've been working seven days a week, um, you know, minimum 16 hour days, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, I've, you know, basically had to make excuses to stop working long enough to unpack necessities. Uh, I'm missing furniture because as part of the move, um, I had to, to, um, uh, how am I going to put this? Uh, I, I had to lose some furniture, um, some core furniture like bedside tables and tall boys. So I'm currently, I'm, I've been in the place for two weeks. Um, I've hardly been here. When I am here, I'm sitting in front of the computer working, but you know, I'm living out of suitcases. Um, most of my stuff's still in boxes in the garage. Uh, the only things I've really unpacked is my computer so I can work and now my uh, video gear so that I can record this. So that's been hell. Um, you know, there was some stuff going on in my life that, that uh, resulted in me needing to move in the first place. So that's been going on in the background. Although I have to say there's been a lot of distractions with everything else that uh, it's actually been kind of an advantage uh, in terms of putting it off anyway, um, in putting off dealing with that stuff. Uh, work's been nuts um, and you know, my diet has suffered as a result. So. This isn't going to be a great episode. This is kind of just a, a, a talking heads episode. Um, just a general chit chat about where I'm at, what's next, where I've been. Um, anyway, so if you're new to the channel, if this is the first time you've watched a Perfecting Pete video, welcome. Um, this is the place to come if you, like me, have been procrastinating and thinking about weight loss for a long, long time, but never seem to get off your butt and do it. Um, you know, I share my, my story, the ups and the downs. This episode is very much going to be about the downs, unfortunately, but, um, you know, that's part and parcel of staying motivated and, and working through because life's going to throw shit at you all the way through, uh, as it always does. And it's about how you react and respond. So uh, it's also about what, what you do with yourself when you don't respond the best way that you could have, uh, which we'll talk about in a sec. So. Uh, yeah, if you like the video, if you get some value out of it, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave me a comment, let me know your thoughts, let me know when you've gone through, um, you know, some of the stuff that we'll be talking about today. Uh, I'm very interested to hear from you. And I will respond to uh, messages on YouTube. So if you've got something to say, rest assured, I'm reading everything and I certainly will reply. So anyway, on with the show. Um, so the first thing that went... Uh, first of all, I, no, before we get into that, I'll talk about where my weight is. So my weight has stabilized. It's completely and utterly plateaued. I have not lost weight for two and a half, three weeks, I want to say. So um, I the, the last video I released was two weeks ago. Um, I had pre-recorded that three weeks ago. So um, just before I moved um, or a week before I moved. So you haven't had an update on my weight for a while. So the week that I released the previous video, uh, I hit an all time record low of 90.4 kilos. And I'm referring off screen just so you know, uh, which is 199.3 pounds. Um, the following day or two, I dropped below the 90 kilo mark for the first time ever. Well, for the first time in this weight loss journey. So I was super uh, proud of myself. I actually felt for the first time like I'd achieved a milestone that I was proud of. Um, you know, I even put a side-by-side uh, -side video on my Instagram, which I'll throw here uh, in a sec, um, linking to my Instagram. I threw a side-by-side -side photo of where I started on my journey, which, which, well, I shouldn't say that, when I started on my uh, science-based six-pack journey to um, that day, which was two weeks ago now, um, where I broke the 90 kilo threshold. Uh, I said I wouldn't do a before and after shot until I was at a point where I felt like I'd actually achieved something and I feel like I achieved something. I dropped from 111 to 90 kilos in about four months. So um, unfortunately it's plateaued since. Now, 
you know, that's been a bit of a demotivator, I have to say. Um, you know, so over the last, if I look at two weeks ago, I was 90.4 or 199.3 pounds. Uh, last Monday, I was 89.8 kilos or 198 pounds, almost on the dot. Uh, and this morning, I was 89.8 kilos or 198 pounds. So, um, and if I look at my graphs, because I weigh myself every morning, if I look at my graphs over the last two, two and a half weeks, it really hasn't moved. It's dropped down to 89.6 kilos at one point. It popped back up over, I think it was 90.2 yesterday. Um, but I'm pretty much sitting in a plateau right now at around the, um, you know, at or around 90 kilos. Um, but I know why I've plateaued. So let's talk about that. First of all, the last time I spoke to you, I talked about keto. Um, I've been saying for a couple of videos now that I'm launching into the next phase of my diet, which is a ketogenic diet. Cut almost all carbohydrates out of my out of my diet and stick with high fat, medium protein, you know, 40 grams or less of carbs. Now on paper, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of the research I did said it's amazing. Um, and I still believe in the diet as a whole, um, but I will say this. First of all, um, intermittent fasting. It's great to exercise while fasting. It's the best time to do exercise. It's actively encouraged because you don't have that, that, that you don't have glucose in your bloodstream to provide that immediate energy that you need while you're working out. Um, which means that your body has to adapt to burning more fat and burning through your fat in order to give you the energy you need to perform that workout. So it's great, particularly with cardio, or well, I don't do any cardio, but it's, it's really good to exercise while fasting. You will accelerate your fat burning. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it will result and it should result. It, sorry, I say it should. Um, I'm not surprised that it results in a drop in performance. So if you're at the gym working out and you switch from a low carb, typical weight loss diet, to a keto diet and you do, um, you know, muscle building exercises. So weight, weight lifting, um, you know, heavy strenuous strength training. Uh, I would not be at all surprised if most people would experience a drop in physical strength and physical performance, at least on a temporary basis until your body adjusts. So the problem is when you're lifting boxes and furniture and, you know, I did two moves back to back. So I moved my housemate out to uh, her new place um, and as soon as that finished I went straight into moving myself out of the old place and into my new place so two moves back to back I'll be honest I made a conscious choice to stop fasting I stopped my intermittent fast it was I was finding it you know I was ruined by 10 o'clock and I had another six hours of lifting heavy furniture and packing and I needed to be at peak performance more than I needed to be burning fat that's the reality. So I made a conscious choice to stop fasting. Now, today's probably the first time where life has started to feel like it's starting to resemble routine again. I'm still, like I said, I'm still living out of suitcases. I'm still living out of boxes. My kitchen is a ruin. My house in general is a ruin. But today's actually felt like there's end in sight. So it hasn't really returned to, to normal yet, but I can at least see that it will be soon. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm unpacking a box a day at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but I'm still not fasting. I ate breakfast this morning. Uh, I, so, so that's, that's reason number one, why I think I'm failing in terms of, well, I'm not failing. Sorry. I'm, I've plateaued in terms of weight loss. I should never use the F word. Um, you know, I made a conscious choice and these are the consequences for that conscious choice. And I knew at the time it was a likely consequence, so I'm accepting of it. I've plateaued for that reason, first and foremost. The second reason is I have not been adhering to keto nearly as strictly as my macros demand or that I had planned and wanted to. Now, um, again, you know, at the risk of sounding like they're excuses, because at the end of the day, they are excuses. Um, and, and, you know, I can freely admit that, but I... I find that a keto diet, a strict keto diet, particularly when you're trying to plan an entire day's calories in a four hour fasting window on keto, I have found my experiences of that are, it requires a heck of a lot more planning. It requires a lot more time invested in food preparation in order to get the, the macronutrients you need out of that four hours. You know, and I'll give you an example. 
um, one of the one of the keto dishes I did cook, um, you know, lasted me two days, but it took me, and which was the the um, it's not a pasta bake. It looks like a pasta bake, but it's not. Um, anyway, I, I put it up on Instagram, put photos of the meal up. It was really tasty. It was really nice, um, but it took me forty five minutes to an hour to prep and cook it. Probably an hour and a half. By the time you add cooking time, probably an hour and a half to prep. Um, you know, and that was just one meal in keto. So I've got two mini meals and then I've got that main meal and then I've got a dessert meal or a, or a shake. Um, but that's an hour and a half of time invested. Now I've, as I said before, I've been really time poor. Um, another example, I found a great recipe and I've found lots of recipes that are awesome for keto that look awesome. They look tasty. I, I would love to try them. Um, but they all take, you know, 45 to, to 90 minutes to prepare. Um, and I just haven't had time. So I started looking for alternatives that were still keto friendly. Uh, and when I say alternatives, I mean fast food. So what can I get that's quick and dirty that doesn't contain loads of carbs? Um, now that worked okay for the first two weeks. I was, I was pretty strict. You know, I, I'll give you some examples and they're not perfect examples because we're still talking refined food here. We're not talking whole foods. Um, you know, my old diet, I would literally just go to the shops on the way home, grab some chicken breast, avocado, brown rice, uh, and one other thing I can't remember, broccoli, beans, that sort of thing. You know, I'd throw the broccoli in the steamer while that was steaming. I'd throw the chicken on the on the pan. Um, by the time the chicken was finished, the, the, you know, the broccoli was steamed and ready to eat, I'd carve up half an avocado, throw the, uh, the brown rice in a microwave and 90 seconds it steams itself in a cup. Um, and dinner was done. It would take me like 15 minutes from start to finish to sit down and eat. That would have been perfect. Over the last three weeks, that would have been great. The ability to just prepare food without thinking about it on autopilot, um, you know, whilst already tired from a day's worth of, of physical exercise. Um, yeah, that would have been great. But you go back to keto and I found a recipe for a pizza, a keto pizza. Uh, I need to go and buy philium husk and coconut flour. Now, I've since discovered where I could buy those two items, but I don't even know what philium husk is. Immediately, I could look it up, but I, you know, off the top of my head, I've never heard of it. Um, mix that stuff together, make a dough with some, I think some egg whites, maybe just some water. I can't remember the recipe. Mix that up, stick it in an oven, bake the, the base, the pizza base, and then add your ingredients on top, stick it back in the oven. Now you have a keto friendly pizza. I found a recipe for keto friendly, um, it was some Mexican. I think it was uh, tacos or it might've been burritos, but again, philium husk and coconut flour, make the base, cook the base, then go and prepare all the food, throw it all together, cook the chicken separately, obviously, um, or the beef, throw it in a pan, you know, and then pr finally prepare your meal. Again, we're talking an hour from start to finish, from opening the first object and, and preparing that to, to eating is at least an hour. I haven't had an hour. I literally haven't had an hour. So fast food alternatives I found. Um, a, a bacon deluxe from Hungry Jack's or Burger King if you're in the States with no bun, no tomato. Now, obviously I asked them to remove the tomato. I don't ask them to remove the bun. I made that mistake once at McDonald's, which we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, and that was a mess. So, um, you know, throw the bun out. You end up with a really messy to eat burger, but tasty quick and easy. Two of those. There's, you know, most of my macros in a day. I just need to balance it out with some protein and I'm done. Um, that was a great alternative. Um, chicken, anyone who cooks any, any company like a Porto's, like, um, uh, Nando's, you know, going at, I was getting half a chicken, um, lightly basted, basically no carbs, a little bit of carbs in the, in the basting, but you're talking like two grams for, you know, 50 grams of protein. And, uh, and, and, you know, a decent amount of fat. But again, the, the, the challenge with keto is I'm finding it very easy to get lots of protein and very difficult to get lots of fat unless you really plan it well. Lots of cheese. But it's hard to order cheese with your half chicken at Nando's. So, you know, so I was sticking to healthy alternatives. The one thing I have noticed, I've been way under my caloric, my caloric intake. So I'm supposed to be eating like 6,200 kilojoules. I think that's a, I'll put, put a number up on the, on the screen, but you know, um, and I would get to the end of the day and I'd have I would have eaten like two and a half, 3000 kilojoules, which is way under my maintenance diet and my maintenance requirements. It's not healthy to eat that little. Um, it encourages your body to, 
to do some crazy ass stuff that's not conducive to long-term weight loss. So, um, you know, and no, lately I've noticed that I've let carbs start to creep in. I mean, keto is great if you're not fasting bacon and scrambled eggs, no toast, no tomato, maybe some tomato sometimes, sausage. You know, if you're on keto, breakfast is awesome, except if you're fasting. But because I stopped fasting, I was out for breakfast every morning. Bacon, eggs, I love my fry up breakfast. So that, that bit was easy, but then you get to the end of the day, I wouldn't have eaten all day because I was working or I was moving. Um, I might have half a chicken and I was always still hungry afterwards. So that's why I've plateaued. Maybe, and you know, thinking thinking positively, maybe there's a little bit of muscle gain in there because I've been doing all this this physical strenuous exercise with moving stuff. Um, maybe that's encouraged, you know, that's contributed to plateauing. I've I've added some muscle mass. I down it. I don't feel like I've grown any muscle mass, but you never know. Um, wishful thinking. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's my update. I have fallen off the wagon well and truly. I've stopped fasting. I've stopped keto. Um, because I've noticed carbs have started to creep in. And when I say notice, it, I'm doing it. But, um, you know, and I take full responsibility for that. But I've noticed carbs have started creeping in. Uh, and for the most part, it still balances out um, in terms of my macros. But if I blow anything in terms of macros at the end of the day, it's always carbs lately. And when I say lately, the last three or four days. So that's why I've plateaued. What's next for me? Well, I made a commitment to a friend who's been at me for months to join the gym with him. Uh, he used to be my next door neighbor. We don't see each other anymore because, you know, I don't live there anymore. Um, oh, the other thing is I've been drinking beer because we've had some work social events. So I've had two nights out on the town in the last couple of weeks. And because of everything else that's been going on, I've totally let my hair down and cut loose. So instead of having, excuse me, vodka based drinks, which, you know, isn't too bad in terms of carbohydrate content. I've been drinking beer. And in fact, my two best mates run a beer brewing company and they did a beer launch. So obviously I had plenty of beer there. So loads of carbs. Um, so that's, that's contributed as well. Anyway, in terms of what's next, I will be joining a gym on the 15th. I know it's uh, randomly, you know, arbitrarily specific, but I'll be joining the gym on payday on the 15th. Um, I'm going to be working out with him two or three times a week. I've never been a gym buddy. Uh, usually I, you know, my, my history of the gym, I was at a PT training studio. So you basically never did a strength workout without a PT there smashing you. So I've never been a gym buddy. Um, I'm weak as hell. I've always been really bad at some basic exercises like bench. Um, you know, bicep curls are fine. Shoulder presses, military presses, um, you know, all the glute work. Um, I've always been fine with all that stuff, but my triceps specifically are super weak and always have been. So I don't know how that's going to go. We'll probably get the shits with me pretty quickly, but we'll see how we go. So join the gym, start adding muscle mass. I'm, I've dropped 20 kilos, or a little over 20, I think 22 kilos. Um, now's the time to start adding muscle mass to, to create a better deficit because my body's basal metabolic rate will go up. My muscles eat more fuel uh, and I'm not going to adjust up my intake. So that'll create a bigger deficit. I should continue to lose weight. It will break me out of this, this um, plateau. I'm also going back to fasting. So by the time this video, sorry, by the time I record my next video, I will have been fasting again. Um, and I'm gonna stick with keto. I, I've been kind of arming and ahhing as to whether or not, hey, I don't have any time. It's gonna be crazy for at least another week or two. Maybe I should just switch back to my previous diet, get back on the chicken, you know, avocado, rice, and steamed veg. And to be frank, I miss it. I really miss it. I was eating the same thing every day for like four months and yet I miss it after two weeks of not being on it or three weeks. Um, but, I'm, I, but I'm gonna stick with keto. I don't think I've given it a fair shot. We'll see how we go. Keto plus intermittent fasting plus gym work uh, in the afternoon after a full day of fasting. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, but the, the whole point is this thing's a journey. So, you know, stay tuned on this channel if you wanna see how it all plays out. Uh, anyway, that's that's all I wanted to say today. Uh, I've noticed that the background is a little boring in my new place. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that yet. If anything, let me know what you think. Um, I don't even know if I'm, I'm in uh, focus at the moment, so hopefully I am or else it's going to be really annoying to re-record a 20 minute video. Anyway, uh, if you got any use out of this, um, you know, just in terms of talking about what, hap what you do and how you deal with setbacks, because I feel like I'm very much in a setback position at the moment. Um, or staying motivated, please hit that subscribe button. I release videos every Tuesday, uh, apart from last week, which I missed. Uh, it's the first video I've missed actually since I've started. Um, if you get some use out of the video, please hit that like button. 
subscribe, leave me a comment, and I will see you next Tuesday, hopefully with some more positive information. And I'm looking forward to talking to you then.